Crossroads Media. Ay, ay, ay! I don't know what to do anymore! I know what you should do, though. We are on the road to 20,000 subscribers. So if you are new to the channel and you want to see me freak out about Philly sports every single damn day, smash that subscribe button and also hit that thumbs up button as well. And lastly, on Twitter, at Broads81, we have just reached 6,000 followers on Twitter. But make sure you follow over there as well. Thank you all so much for the love and the support. I love you just as much back. Thank you and enjoy the show. Just a quick heads up, this was recorded before the news that Tyler Anderson ended up going to Seattle, which is just a laughing joke. It makes everything even funnier. So when you do hear him referenced throughout this postgame podcast, just know that, you know, the news was not out until I was completed. So we will obviously discuss this, whether it's in Coffee with Broads or more Phillies podcasts moving forward. Thank you. So much for Andrew McCutcheon saving the season. Exactly what I thought was going to happen occurred. The Phillies lose their next game because Matt Moore is a disgrace. So starting pitching, a problem. Their defense was in shambles. <clears throat> Didi Gregorius, who would have thought there would be mistakes out there from a fundamental standpoint that would ruin their opportunity to win the game? You know, afterwards, and I know Ben Davis is Mr. Happy Mr. I love baseball, Mr. Positivity, and that's what he is. He's going to look at the positives, but I get a bit bothered and upset when right after the game, I want to see a fired up Ricky Bow because it does truly generate with my feelings in that moment, and I have to hear Ben Davis talk about how great the bullpen is. Look, the bullpen did a fine job in this outing. When you think about the one hit allowed, when they clearly had to pitch a big portion of this game due to the fact that Matt Moore was an embarrassment and getting crucified by Josh Bell, by Juan Soto. Like, these guys are just murdering the ball off of you. And I get it. I understand. Plays should have been made, and that absolutely impacts a lot of things. I say it all the time for every damn pitcher on this team. But at the same time, you're not good. You are not helping out this squad whatsoever. And when you're on the mound, this team is in a position to lose more than it is win, regardless of anything that's happening behind you on the diamond. So anyway, where I was going with that point, oh, the bullpen. I don't care that they are doing okay in that one game because that's the problem with this team. They're 50 and 50 after 100 baseball games. One night their bullpen's okay, while their defense and their starting pitching sucks. Then you might have a good outing by Zach Wheeler, but you might not be able to produce as many runs and your offense is an issue, and then you go to the bullpen for maybe two innings and they become a show of themselves. You can't put it together. It's been 100 games, and they haven't really figured anything out. They're not gelling whatsoever. So why would I imagine anything really changing, you know? Look, it's the cliche. You win 50, you lose 50. What do you do with the others? And I mentioned this a couple of days ago. At the same time, there's no way in hell that I could feel positive. This team just had such an emotional win yesterday, right? Powerful moment, no doubt about it. One of the moments in this season that we're going to look back at as, wow, that was incredible. That was so tremendous. Filled with little kid baseball moment. The next day, you're down how many? How quickly? Come on. Now, you have Bryce Harper out there doing everything he possibly can. He had three hits. He had the inside, the Parker. The guy's just doing it all, leaving everything out there on the field. While Andrew McCutcheon, he struck out by Brad Hand, and I didn't love some of the pitches that were called on the outside part of the plate there to put him in such a hole early. But, you know, it was a nasty pitch by Brad Hand to get him looking on the inside part of the plate after going outside and getting those corners from the blue. So, you know, I can't hate on it. It froze him up, and it was just nasty. That's what it was. Bryce Harper, it, it, it does suck that in the ninth you had your top of your lineup, your your middle of the pack that you would really love to have in that moment. And Gene Segura gets on second base due to a sloppy throw from their defense. The Nationals were trying to piss this game away. They were basically trying to duplicate what happened last night where you have a chance. When I say last night, I'm posting this. You know, the, last, the first game of the series might make it a little bit cleaner. You, you knew. You knew that they were... 
No business to winning that game, the Phillies were. No business. But they just stole it. The Nats were trying to hand it away again. Bryce Harper had a pitch that was hanging that he could have dominated. Didn't do it. Just sucks. It sucks. But altogether, you know, Bryce has been ridiculous. McCutcheon has been ridiculous. The eighth inning was a bit odd, too. I thought Andrew Knapp was going to give the Phillies the lead. That's for damn sure. When he went opposite field, 0-2, and the ball kept carrying, and you can hear Kruk on the broadcast almost begging the ball to get out of the uh, get out of the ballpark and go over the fence. I thought that thing was going to continue to fly, but it died out, and I was a, I was a little disappointed. You know what? During that at-bat, and I'm not just saying this now because we saw what happened, I, I did feel feel something was going to occur, whether it was just a hit that maybe loaded the bases at that time. When he was in the batter's box, something generated throughout my body saying, bro, Andrew Knapp is going to do something positive here. And I was kind of right because it was kind of close, but close is clearly not enough. There was also that bizarre Didi Gregorius foul ball play. Not, not the one that he messed up on. That one made my damn eyes bleed so much. But I'm talking about when it hit the foul territory, the Nationals did not know what they were doing. Now, you go to the replay booth. There was chalk that flied up. There was chalk that bounced on the ground, and you could see the white bounce up. And I'm shocked that with all the camera work and all the broadcasting that goes on, that we don't have maybe a a camera that would be a little bit closer to that line to truly see if you could see it better. Now, is it just because they're staying with what was called on the field? I guess it's possible when the umpires went to the... Oh, went went to the headphones and made the call again. But I'll tell you what, I thought something happened there. Wouldn't that have been enough to, to score some runs? I don't know. I mean, the team's pressing every time there is that chance. I feel they have to milk everything out of it. They have to do this. They have to do that. They have to do it. And that puts so much pressure that they're holding the bad extra tight. They're trying too hard instead of just... Being in the moment, understanding the moment, and driving the baseball without overthinking. It seems everyone's uh, stressed out. Everyone's tense. You got to loosen up the body a bit. Go up there and just swing. Do you. Do what got you here. Instead of, man, the Phillies, we've been we've been screwing up with runners in scoring position. We have to keep doing it. Yeah, you're right. To a degree, you do have to keep doing it. Like, keep scoring these runs. Keep knocking in runs. But at the same time, you're tense. You're too tense. Speaking of some other guys throughout the game, though, Odubo Herrera, two hits, one walk, one RBI. Reese Hoskins had two hits, and he had two walks as well. And I'll tell you what, he saw some really good at-bats, just utilizing the plate very well, uh, earning Reese Hoskins' walks. You know, there's something to be said about his eye. And there's plenty of times where he does it at such a professional level. And I've been very hard on Reese Hoskins throughout his lows. And, you know, you just have to really appreciate what he's done offensively this season. It's been pretty damn solid. Him and Bryce Harper, you know? Bryce Harper has been something else. But because you're 50 and 50 and you're losing the fan base and you're just going up and down to these extremes... No one's really focusing on it. Or it's because you expect that from Bryce Harper. That's what we paid the $330 million man to be. So why would I be giving him credit and praising him and giving him golf claps every time he does something that we anticipate him doing? Now, I mean, I don't think that that's necessarily fair if you go to that whole level where you just don't appreciate the man because you expect it, right? I mean, that would just being too, that would be too harsh. That would be going too aggressive. But he's been... Very damn solid and same with Reese Hoskins. JT, not so great in this one, specifically 0 for 5, and his batting average continues to kind of be in a spot where you don't love it. You're not happy. He was seeing the ball fairly well in this recent little stretch, I guess you could call it. But tonight, yeah, 0 for 5. Not very sharp. Just like the execution on trading for Tyler Anderson. What the hell is going on there? The Pirates have him going. They don't really like what they see out of one of the prospects that was thrown in there from the Phils. And now the New York Mets might be trying to take an offer. They did with Rich Hill, who's 76 years old and is going to be wheeling himself out to the pitcher's mound to to try and throw. I mean, that's how old Rich Hill is. With, With someone like Tyler Anderson, right? He'll eat some innings for you on the back end. 
Uh, in, this, in his last seven starts, he's had a decent ERA, 389. Not anything overwhelming. Once again, we're talking about the back end of the starting rotation. Nothing serious, but it's an MLB pitcher who can log in actual minutes without getting insanely destroyed at times. They can just give you the solid four or five innings instead of questioning and begging and praying that maybe you can give us four or five innings without allowing two or three earned runs. It's more of, hey, get us through these three or four, five innings, not three, four or five innings that we can get to our bullpen. Uh, it's an okay move, right? I, I do sense that, you know, there's some that love it a little too extreme, although at this point it's so up in the air, you don't really even know what's happening. I tried to get the latest on it. I haven't heard any news, but it's just typical Philadelphia Phillies baseball where, you know, you have an opportunity to land somebody who can help you out. But, you know, this is what bothers me. This team is not good. They're not good. They should not be buying. Now, essentially, you give up no bodies. You're, you're not giving up anything of significance. You're not giving up substance. It's just two lower prospects to try something. So does it cream your organization? Absolutely not. Is it worth shots like this because of where you naturally are with the poor division? I guess, I, I guess maybe. I guess maybe. I don't love it. Because I know what's inevitable. I know what's at the end of the road here. And it's a team that is not capable of doing what it needs to do to play playoff baseball. And, you know, I'm kind of disappointed. I truly mean this. I'm kind of disappointed that we're sucked into this. We don't deserve this. I saw a bunch of tweets out there, right? And I hate Twitter. If you can't notice, I reference it all the time with all sorts of irrational takes and very strong emotional takes that are way too aggressive for my liking in specific moments. But right after the game, it's go get some help. You're only three and a half games back. You're 500. Let's go. Back end starts now. What? They just just lost to the Nationals. Do I have to remind everybody once again for the 10 billionth time on why your schedule was the way that it was entering the second half? Because you have teams like the Washington Nationals on the schedule. So when you lose to these teams, you're not really backing up the the support of why you thought they could go on a run. I've said that 75,000 times already. And it's just continuing to be true. The statement just continues to be proven right when you see this team fail. You know what's going to happen, right? Typical 500 baseball. Zach Wheeler tomorrow. I would imagine they get the win. I would imagine Zach Wheeler gets the baseball, cruises through. Although, you know, you've seen the Nationals have a little how do you do against him. But at the same time, Zach Wheeler's coming off of a nice how do you do. And I sense that the Phillies can win with him on the mound. There's confidence. There's a belief in him. When he takes the rubber, it's all right. We're in good hands. Okay, he's definitely going to help when we need it here. He might stop the bleeding for us. Then you have Vinny B. So win with Wheeler, lose the following game. Then you got yourself a split against the Nationals right after you split against the Braves. I mean, I could see it 5,000 miles away right after, or that was, yeah, that was after you got swept by the Yankees. You can see it written on the wall. It's the fake belief. It's the fake belief. How about the Trey Turner thing? I'm trying to look at what else went on in this game. Well, you had the Trey Turner grounder that started off the sloppy defense, but Trey Turner just leaves the game. There was speculation that maybe he was getting traded and he was going to go to another city, but it ends up more COVID problems throughout baseball and throughout some of these leagues. I mean, you're seeing it all around the NFL right now with players that don't want to get it, players that have it head coaches that are not happy with some of the decision-making by some of the players. And the last thing I want to do is go through a COVID conversation in professional sports. That is literally probably the last thing. I'd rather talk about some of these wild sports that are going on in the Olympics and breaking them down play-by-play, shot-by-shot, depending on whatever it is, than have any sort of dialogue about COVID in sports. But unfortunately, it's something that you can't really escape right now Because you're having these problems with the Phillies in general. And, you know, speaking of COVID, I'm just thinking about what the Phillies have really kind of been around over the last handful of weeks. Would you rather see Ronald Torres play every day at shortstop and Didi Gregorius take some time off or Alec Bohm being the one sitting? You know, now it's gotten so bad for Didi Gregorius that, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty damn basic and it should not be that hard to process. It's time to give him some rest, give him breathers, 
sit him on the side and go, hey, Didi, you just you need to reset. That's all. You got to retool. You got to hit the refresh button because what you're providing for us right now is, quite frankly, a disaster. So I'd rather see Toe at shortstop. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine saying a couple months ago, you know what I want to see? Ronald Torres over Didi Gregorius every single day in the lineup. But I guess I could say that about a lot of things. I never anticipated saying some of the things I say about Alec Boom. Same with JT to a degree at times. It's a weird franchise. It's a weird roster. It's a weird team. Nothing ever goes right with this bad boy. As you can see with what we're witnessing with the simple trade for an individual who's not even upper echelon, not even high talent. Like we're talking about your most basic starter that you're just hoping and praying goes four or five innings and can give you that. That, that is what this trade is for, and you can't even do that properly. So it's just uh, insane. Oh, yeah, this is this is something that I wanted to touch on. So, you know, I made the joke on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Broads81. McCutcheon saved the season lasted about 12 hours, which was fun. It was a fun 12 hours, and this was the response. Well, I mean, you, you only lost because of Matt Moore. The Phils only lost because Matt Moore blew it and Didi's bad defense. Yeah, I, I know that. I watched the game. Am I supposed to be surprised? That's why I make the statements that I make. This team isn't going anywhere. Why? Because they have Matt Moore. Because they pitch Matt Moore. Because he's had way too many starts than he should have had when the season began. That's why. I know this. And I know about their horrendous defense. That's information and data that I have dissected and heavily put into my damn brain over the last 100 games to make the assessments that I made. That it's all fake will. It's all fake praying, if you will. When you think about making the playoffs, it's all fake. Oh, here comes the run. It's fake. You're fake praying. You're fake believing. They're not real emotions. What is real, though, is DraftKings Sportsbook and their amazing offers. DraftKings Sportsbook is not only my favorite sportsbook, but America's top-rated sportsbook. Speaking of America, our top athletes are over in Tokyo competing for the gold, and DraftKings has a medal-worthy offer just for my listeners. Listen to this great offer. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use promo code BROGE when you sign up to turn $1 into $100 in free credits if America wins a medal. That's code BROGE to turn $1 into $100 in free credits for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. I know everybody's watching Bryce Harper swing with that Chris Bryant bat and basically thinking that that means that's where the Phillies are headed. There's no way in hell the Phillies are headed down Chris Bryant Road. Dave Dombrowski stated that, well, if you lose 10 in a row, that could change a lot. If you win 10 in a row, that could change a lot. I'm paraphrasing, but the message was there's some time to see what happens. And when we watch this baseball team play out, you know, we'll see what's going on here if they lose he claimed that they were buyers at the time, as this was a couple weeks ago. But he said, if you lose 10 in a row, that could change a lot. Well, what happens if you keep playing this type of baseball? I believe when they were winning those series around the All-Star break, they had a different mindset going. And then now you're constantly hearing the words basically around this. Well, we're not going to be stupid. We're not going to be foolish. Well, when you say that, it's almost as if you're holding some players back because you know you're not ready. So the Tyler Andersons of the world is basically the attempts. That's you swinging and basically going all out as you possibly can before you toy with that line of stupidity and foolish, which, you know, I respect the fact that they understand that. They need to understand that. It's not time. It's not the year to go all in. I'm just fascinated to think about what Dave Dombrowski would have done if he was in any other division in baseball, if this team at 50 and 50 was nine games back in a division that actually had a real leader instead of three and a half games back, how much does that change, you know, your thought process on what you do? And I just want to go to the standings right now to see what else is going on around the National League East 
You have the Braves are 50 and 51. The Nationals are 46 and 54. Damn, they're in Marlins territory, no doubt about it. And the Mets, 53 and 46. It's like, it's just such Bush League. That's what it is. It's such Bush League, this Phillies team. All right, let's go to the Anytime Hotline. Hear from the people. Hear what you had to say after the game. I know the Phillies came up close and they had uh, some chances late, but I just want to get back to Matt Moore. This guy can no longer start games for us anymore. I'm sorry. He can't. If we're trying to make a run for the division title, we're going to try to catch the Mets. We can't have this guy take the mound every fifth game going forward. This guy is trash. He does not belong in the major leagues. He belongs in Japan. We need to at least make some kind of move. I don't know if that signing old Cole Hamels may be. I mean, Cole Hamels is old as hell, but he's uh, he's probably better than Matt Moore is. It's worth a shot. I know that everyone's getting the nostalgia going for Cole Hamels. It's absolutely worth the shot. It can't hurt because even if it's bad or just as bad or even worse, I mean, you have to try something new. My problem is, and it's it's not wrong. What you're saying is not wrong. Matt Moore can't pitch anymore. You're right. He can't pitch anymore. He can't be starting. Neither can Howard. Neither can Vinny V. Neither can Matt Moore. So now you have three. You have three of those individuals right now that you're saying that about. And you talk about, well, that that can't happen if you're going to make an actual push for the Mets. You're not. You're not. That's what I've been trying to kind of say. Like, you're, you're not. Now, they make the move for Tyler Anders. Does that move the needle to make you feel like that's something that will change the run. See, to legitimately change this run, to to, to swap a Vinny V or a Matt Moore for an Anderson, it's an upgrade. But if you're talking about making serious enough changes, is that enough of a serious change to go make an actual run at it? My opinion is no. No, that's not enough. If those are the type of acquisitions that you're making, how strong are you? What what is the what is the step? If this baseball team's five hundred, right? Are they now five ten? If we're talking about just win percentage or so, if you're winning fifty percent of your games, your win percentage is in that range. What is it now? Five ten. It's not going to be different. Not anything significant enough to think about the Mets. But this franchise and this team knows what to do. Keep us right there. Grab us by the nuts. Grab us by the testicles. Grab us by the balls. And hold us in as long as possible until they just fall flat on their face eventually. That That's what they are known to do. Here we go. Damn. I have to tell you, to walk around again. I mean, the Nuts have got lucky. Matt Moore was pitching. Matt Moore might be one of the worst pitchers in the league. I think he had two three-run home runs allowed. Uh, Josh Bell wanted to rip those balls. And then... The Phillies had a comeback, and then you had Bryce Harper, had an inside-the-park home run. You had Andrew McCutcheon have a home run, but it was not enough. But you have Zach Wheeler going tomorrow. Yeah, Zach Wheeler going tomorrow, but it doesn't make me feel great about all these losses that continue to happen. Now, one of the statements that stands out to me throughout the call was the Nationals got lucky. Why did they get lucky? They got lucky that what? The Phillies have bad pitching? See, this goes back to an older argument I've had for quite some time with people on the Twitter sphere and even people in my comment section and even people on the Anytime Hotline at times. Luck in sports. I just feel that you can technically in any way, shape, or form claim that someone got lucky. If he ends up hitting an 0-2 home run, you got lucky the pitcher threw the pitch. You got lucky Matt Moore was on the mound. Well, it's not luck. This is your, fra- this is your franchise. This is your roster. You got lucky Didi Gregorius made a mistake. No, it's not. That's not lucky at all. He constantly makes mistakes. I would make the argument that if the best defender in the world made a mistake, and let's say that that defender made 150 straight plays, and then on the 151st, that's where something happened where it was a bit off, and maybe it hit the bottom of his glove and went through his legs. Everyone goes, 
because you don't you don't really know what to do. You don't know how to react. You've never seen that happen before. That I guess maybe you can at least have more of the luck conversation. But when things happen over and over and over again and these players continue to play, that's not luck. That's just baseball. That's major league baseball and a bad team being ran in a bad roster with bad players that can't perform. I wouldn't say that that's luck involved. That's just reality of who the Phillies really are this season, which stings. It stings. You know, I really, truly do forget what it's like to watch fun, legitimate, competitive baseball where it's not laughing at a pain. It's not miserable moments. It doesn't feel like work. This feels like work. This feels very similar to watching the Eagles play last season on Sunday. I was forced to do it. Watching the Phillies, it feels forced. Yeah, they're hanging in there, but they're not a good team. So I'm forced to keep involved, and I'm forced to keep my eyes glued to the damn television screen because of the surrounding factors and not them and their play. All right, this is from a texter with no name. Hey, Broads, how do you feel about the Tyler Anderson trade? I like it. It will absolutely help. We need more, though. I think that's basically right. I think that's exactly it. You nailed it. Text, pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty right on the money. Uh, It's hard to hate it because anything could be better. So whether you try Cole Hamels, whether this is it, you know, adding to that, you can never have too much starting pitching. And, you know, it can't be anything more disastrous than what we consistently see. I saw a funny-ass question. I thought it was a poll, but it was actually just a, a question laid out by Bob Wankel who covers the Phils, and it was, if you had to watch one pitcher stay in Philadelphia to make their next start, would it be Vince Velasquez or Matt Moore? And quite frankly, it's Vince Velasquez because I think he has the opportunity to give you one of those five-inning outings that are pretty damn impressive or that, you know, four and two-thirds, maybe a lot of pitches, but no earned runs or just one earned run. While Matt Moore, I have no faith whatsoever. He just gets obliterated and squared up, and he does not deserve to be in Major League Baseball right now. So not that Vinny V does. I'm not claiming Vinny V does, but I'll take my chances on Vinny V if my alternative is Matt Moore. And I honestly don't even know if it's close. I honestly do not even think it's, it's relatively close, which is sad. Right? How about Chase Anderson coming in? Oh, my. A gamer, Matt Moore and Chase Anderson are your are your weapons of choice, are the ones that are available for your team. I mean, talk about a nightmare. Talk about a devastating time. Oh, it hurts. It hurts my damn soul. I don't know how much longer I can deal with this. I'm just talking about not so much this season, although, sure, this season could easily be thrown into the equation, but I'm talking about this type of Phillies season. This is now what, three straight years, if not more than that? I guess three. It feels like three off the top of my head. Three straight years of this? I'm tired of it. I really am. It's getting to me. It feels like it's weighing down on my shoulders, and I can't control it. I have no actual control in this situation. I wish I did. And I like Dave Dombrowski. I think he's a very smart baseball mind, and he hasn't had enough time to really, truly have that much of an impact yet. So we need to wait to see and, you know, go down the road of Dave Dombrowski to see the the mind of him. But this is crushing me. I'm getting sick and tired of it. And let's see what happens tomorrow, though, because I'm basically going to tell you what's happening. It'll be your your standard win. You'll be over 500. You'll feel good. If Vince Velasquez can do this, then you end up only splitting the series. Then, oh, we'll take a series split against a division rival. Why? Why would you take the series split? You said that the last time. You can't be okay with that. But you're going to have to be okay with that because that's what this team does. They play 500 baseball. And with that, I'm shutting it down. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will see you next time. 